We are in northern India, in Jharkhand, one of the poorest regions in the country. Deep in the crevices of this cliff, 20 or so men and women are rummaging through the dirt. They are mining for mica. There are thousands of mines like this spread across the Jharkhand region. They are not run by big corporations. Each person collects these stones for themselves. For just over a dollar, these women are working eight-hour days under a blazing sun. It's not just adults working in these mines. Further down the valley, we spot a group of children. Kids aged between six and nine, working in heat that can reach temperatures of 116 degrees Fahrenheit. This desert landscape hosts hills that are full of this mineral. India is the largest producer of these shiny strips, found by simply reaching down and collecting them from the ground. This raw material is little known to the public, but is in fact integral for a multitude of products that we use in our everyday lives. It can be found in car paint, as an isolating material for electronic parts, and even as an ingredient in the cosmetics industry. When crushed into a powder, mica is found in almost every beauty product. Mica. Mica. To find out more about the product's importance in the beauty industry, we head to the Carousel du Louvre at the Makeup in Paris trade fair, destined for cosmetic professionals and experts in this raw material. There aren't any stands for Chanel, Dior, or L'Oreal here, as most big brands like these don't make their own products, instead outsourcing to manufacturers who are mostly in Italy. Natural mica is an essential ingredient in makeup such as mascara, blush, lipstick, and foundation. With this, you're actually just physically pressing organic pigments into mica. The way most companies will formulate, they'll go with mica usually as their base for, let's say, a pressed powder. Basically, there's mica everywhere. 
You find it in the shampoo, you find it in the toothpaste. Everywhere you have this pearly effect, you have mica products. Manufacturers are well versed in their recipes and processes. But do they know where their raw materials are sourced? They're aware of the child labor issues and claim they are very concerned about it. Ci sono dei fornitori che certificano determinate cose. Un produttore deve tener conto di tutta questa filiera. Ci affidiamo al fornitore che fa delle dichiarazioni e poi so che ci sono anche degli enti certificatori che vanno a certificare che queste eh, fonti di origine siano, eh, in questo caso, non sfruttamento del, del lavoro. Noi usiamo miche di cui conosciamo la provenienza e il fornitore e sono nelle liste delle grandi multinazionali perché le multinazionali questo problema lo hanno già affrontato e lo stanno costantemente affrontando. Stanno compilando liste di fornitori che si adeguano a un rispetto del sociale e a un rispetto delle norme di buona fabbricazione. Grazie mille. But what is the real story behind these claims? Mica can be found all over the world. The major producers are the US, South Korea, Brazil, Canada, China, and of course, India. According to the official organization Eurostat, India represents 30% of all mica imported into Europe. Officially, mica produced in India comes from Rajasthan. But in reality, most of the deposits are found in the states of Jharkhand and Bihar a region where mica mining happens illegally and in secret. Almost 90% of mica. So can we really be sure of the conditions that this essential mineral for our skin is extracted? We're back in Jharkhand. These wild valleys which spread for miles were declared as a natural reserve by the state in the 1990s. In order to protect them, the authorities banned all mica mining. However, this drone footage shows that there are huge numbers of mines here. These surface craters testify to the sheer amount of mining that's been carried out by villagers, even in areas that are very difficult to access. Some miners are using dynamite to open up the mountains, whilst others use more rudimentary methods. In order to understand why this mining has taken place over 40 years, despite the bans in place, we decided to get in touch with the miners. It was hard to spot them in the field. After two days of searching, we met a family. Anil is 25 years old. Every day he comes here to mine mica with his wife and children. Anil wasn't always a miner. Just two years ago, he was working as a farmer. He lives in this village, located at the foot of the mines, with a population of around 60 people. There is no running water or electricity, despite the brand new poles. The family's livelihood used to be farming. However, due to drought and climate change, most of the land is now barren. Extraction of mica is now an essential source of revenue for more than 90% of Jharkhand's population. Miners are willing to take huge risks to get their hands on it. Overmined on the surface, 
they have to go deeper and deeper in order to find this precious mineral. The sound of mining work near a well caught her attention. Bye. Hello, Baya? Baya? Hello? Hello, Baya? I'm going to call the police. 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 I'm going मारे एक देखो ऐसा जल गया तो क्या होगा? है क्या करें फिर उसको कोई खास नहीं है बिल्कुल तामा है एक खतरे वाला ही काम है जो बात है जो सही है लेकिन क्या करें मजदूर पेट के लिए तो अपना सरकार हमारे लिए कुछ दे नहीं गए कि छोड़ गए कि भाई तुम्हारी नौकरी मिल जाए तो कहीं काम करो पर लेकिन शाम के he allows us to follow him into the tunnel he has built. Every month, around 12 miners die in the region because of these dangerous underground quarries. Almost 50 feet underground, the air supply is running low. It's around 113 degrees, and there's nothing in place to hold up the structure. It could collapse at any moment. Karan and his friend Ravi spend eight hours a day in the darkness here. This ordeal brings them around 300 rupees a day, the equivalent of two dollars and seventy-five cents. साल तो हमने काम नहीं किए, मतलब चार महीना काम किए, बाकि पहले का जो कम से कम चालीस पचास साल दादा लोग को तो ये सब सुनकर आपको ये नहीं लगता था नहीं लगता तो है बिल्कुल खौफ है ऐसी कोई बात नहीं इंसान है इंसान के जगह तो खौफ होते ही हैं पर क्या करें इस चीज को पर कोई इतना हमारे यहाँ घटना उतना ये नहीं है अरे कभी कल भगवान ने चाह तो हो जाता है बाकी ऐसा तो घटना हुई ही नहीं हमारे बीच अच्छा कुछ नहीं है ऊपर इसके मैके के मुकाबले में है नहीं और उतना है नहीं जैसे इसका एक पत्थर आता है जैसे ये हो गया तो जैसे कि जो दिशा ये मोड़ा हुआ वही दिशा सब लोग चल रहे हैं इसमें अब इसे इधर नहीं है तो ये दिशा को छोड़ दिए बाकी ये दिशा में है इस चीज का तो इसी दिशा को लेके हम लोग जा रहे हैं हाँ मैका तो अच्छा क्वालिटी का ही है आपको पता है ये बै कानूनी काम है हाँ हाँ चार पाँच महीने पहले करीब आए हुए थे तो उनका कहना था कि भाई गैर कानूनी चीज़ है तुम इस चीज़ को उस नहीं करो तो काम मत करो मना करते हो उनका कहना है कि हमारे सामने आना नहीं आएगा तो भी तो जो कानूनी तो रहे वो उसका तो अपना तो अपनाएंगे ही अपनाएंगे चाहे तो वैसे छोड़ दो तो थाने ले जाओ वो हिसाब से कई बार बीच में भी छोड़ देते करीब समझ गए छोड़ो क्या करेगा ये करीब बेचारा तो हज़ार रुपये मंथली है करीब इधर उधर जो आ जाते हैं कई बार the mountain, however, is less forgiving. Karan plays down the danger, but people have died in his own village. These two miners live in Tisri, a town with a population of around 4,000 that's surrounded by mining deposits. Mining is the main source of income here. Three years ago, disaster hit. This woman lost her husband to the mines. She has four children. Like most of the Jarkhan villagers, she cannot read or write. Uh, 
हम मिलकुआ गलती वहाँ मैका को आएल नहीं तो खदेब नहीं मर गलती गलती कोई वहाँ मैका को आएल नहीं वहाँ खाद वहाँ में दैब गलती तो वहाँ थी वह गलती माटी पानी गिर गलती था वहीं दैब गलती और भी लोग गुजरे थे उसमें हाँ तीन गोटे गलती तीन गो है Since her husband died, Anita is the only provider for her family. Every day she walks over a mile under the hot sun on rocky paths before reaching the summit of this mountain. When they aren't at school, her children come with her to work. The youngest is just four years old. After three hours, Anita and her children have collected enough to feed themselves for a day. It's a poor man's work, but many big businesses rely on it. Back with Karan and Ravi. We're trying to understand where their mica goes once it's sold. Is it destined for the European market? Yeah, I've got it in my mind. Where did you go? I've got it in my mind. I've got it in my mind. लाइसेंस <laughs> तो कई बार इसका लिस्ट जो किया हुआ होता है लाइसेंस के लिए तो लाइसेंस ही काम कर सकते हैं और किसके जाकर देख सकते हैं हम लोग पर वहाँ जाइएगा ना तो किसी को आप अपने हिसाब से बोलिएगा तो बता देगा वो कि अबरक का काम जो होता है कई बार जैसे कि फैक्ट्रीयां बने हुए जैसे कि लगेगा कि फैक्ट्री है बड़े-बड़े At the end of each day, the villagers take what they've collected towards the valley to collection points, where the minerals are sold by weight. These small retailers supply the production line and sell mica to the local wholesalers. The local residents direct me to the wholesalers that will eventually buy their product. We head to the center of town to meet them. There are more than a dozen of them as mica production is the town's only industry. At first, they refuse to be filmed. Eventually, one of the wholesalers agreed to respond to our questions off camera. We filmed the following scenes with a hidden camera. The wholesaler admits that the mica is sourced from illegal mines, but as soon as we suggest that it comes from child labor, he shuts down. 
बच्चे तो काम नहीं कर रहे हैं बच्चे जो हैं वह जिमरा मायका में काम नहीं कर रहे वो गलत अफवाह है मगर क्या है कि बच्चे जब कहीं काम हो रहे हैं तो बच्चे कभी खाना पहुंचाने के लिए चले जाते हैं और खाना पहुंचाने के क्रम में कुछ को है कोई मीडिया उसको भेज देता है सिर्फ उसी को ही भेज देता है उसी को भेज देता है मतलब वो बच्चे वहाँ पे काम नहीं करते बच्चे काम नहीं करते आप एक्सपोर्ट करेगा नहीं तो आप आ, आप काम भेज दो यहाँ नहीं है यहाँ बम्बे में सूरत में है और बाकी को चाइना चाइना जर्मनी 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 में कौन सी कंपनी करते हैं उसी One of the main buyers of the mica that's produced in the region is, according to this man, the German group Merck. Merck is one of the largest corporations in Germany. Founded in 1668, this multinational earns over 16 billion dollars in the chemical, cosmetics, and pharmaceutical industries. Merck, as the oldest chemical and pharmaceutical company. Bundles 350 years of expertise from healthcare, life science, and performance materials, and translates it into cosmetic ingredient development. We call this translational cosmetics. The European leader in supplying raw materials to the cosmetics industry. Subsidiaries such as the Colorona and Timuron Group are the main mica pigment suppliers to big brands. Such as L'Oréal, Chanel, and Guerlain. Is the Merck way to innovate in beauty? At this beauty trade fair, we approach the representatives of the German company to question them on their supply chain. It's a sensitive subject, so we chose not to warn them that we were coming. Bonjour, Brando Baranzelli, enchanté, envoyé spécial. On est en train de faire un sujet sur le marché de la cosmétique et du mica. Donc euh, on est en train de, de voir plusieurs stands. On a déjà vu euh, certains producteurs. Est-ce que vous pouvez répondre à, à nos questions Non, on a personne de la communication. Pardon On a personne de la communication. Vous aviez pris rendez-vous pour euh, cette interview Non. Alors ils sont en Allemagne. Donc, ouais. Ça va être compliqué. Ils sont en congé en plus, là, la nuit. Non, on l'avait là, il fallait prendre un rendez-vous avant. D'accord, parce qu'on n'a pas pris rendez-vous avec les autres stands. Hein. On a juste posé les questions aux gens et ils nous ont répondu. Euh... Nous, c'est comme ça qu'on fait ça. <laughs> the stand manager suggests we write an email to her colleagues in Germany. We did this the next day. The company declined our offer of an interview without giving any reason. Whilst waiting, they suggested we read their corporate responsibility information accessible on their website. It claims a zero tolerance policy for child labor. To confirm these statements, we headed back to India, to Koderma, a city in northern Jharkhand. This town with a population of 24,000 is the hub of the mica industry, containing the majority of the export businesses and treatment facilities. Hello. Ha. Ah. Come. Shaitan is 25 years old, and he's one of the exporters in town. When I introduce myself as a journalist, he agrees to show me his warehouses and respond to questions about child labor. Samuel, will you have some food in it? Take it. 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 His business has around 50 employees.
the process is that that uh, we are screening the raw materials uh, there in the uh, screener all the sand particles and the impurities is out from the screener and the material will be like clean sand free sorted ground and filtered the crystals are then refined one final time before becoming the final product this is impurity free mica flex it is widely used in pigments and cosmetic industries impurity free mica flex these precious mica flakes are wrapped and then exported to europe and sold at around 550 dollars per ton Listening to the young entrepreneur, there's a good reason his mica isn't sourced from mines that use child labor. It comes from Rajasthan, where extraction is legal and controlled by the authorities. This is the lorry of Rajasthan that comes from uh, the legal mica mine and that unloading in our factory. Where all the mica mines is legally run by their uh, owners. According to NGOs, three quarters of the country's mica deposits aren't situated in Rajasthan, but rather around Koderma in Jharkhand. When working on the Merck investigation, we found a database that records mica exports from the port in Calcutta. We saw that Merck gets several containers a week delivered to Germany and is supplied by two exporters based in Koderma, Remdu Modi and Pashisia and Company, both businesses that we know well. When we were conducting our investigation in the villages, the wholesaler confirmed that these businesses work with illegal mine. We managed to find these two suppliers to Merck on the outskirts of Koderma. They're located right next to one another. We pay them a visit with our hidden cameras. As soon as we arrive at Pashisia, all the workers scurry away in a matter of seconds. Only one man welcomes us, a man who seems to be the boss. Brenda. Yes. How are you? Posing as a potential buyer, I try to find out more about his suppliers and clients, but the man quickly becomes suspicious. All right. Actually, uh, at the moment, uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry that uh, I am not able to discuss any business topics without my father's permissions because he is a senior person. Your father? Yes. 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 We hit a brick wall. After, we head to Ramdu Modi. We're welcomed by the foreman, and the boss says over the phone that he can't see us. Disappointed, we are getting ready to leave when we spot another factory just a hundred feet away from the first two. This time, the boss is there, and he welcomes us with open arms. He knows his neighbors well and works with them often. Still posing as a potential buyer, I ask him about Ramdu Modi and Pashisia. Uh, the man is happy to chat and reveals the secrets about trade with foreign countries. Yes, 
राजस्थान में लीज इजी है भेलवारा राजस्थान में भी माइका मिलता है वहाँ पेपर इजी है तो ये लोग का किया वहाँ लीज ले लिया वहाँ से कुछ माल ले आ रहा है पेपर लेके आ जा रहे While their mica comes from illegal mines in Jharkhand, the trick for exporters is to buy a license from Rajasthan to make their businesses legitimate and to export their products with the correct paperwork. The man then introduces us to his colleague. Hello. He informs us that it is also possible for import businesses to get a certificate of ethical conduct regarding child labor. All you have to do is pay. No matter where the mica is from, it's easy to get papers that prove it hasn't been produced by child labor. Here is what the certificates look like. This particular copy comes from an Indian company that provides international certification. It ensures that the mica has never been touched by a child's hands. According to this Indian exporter, these papers are a mandatory requirement for international groups like Merck. <laughs> Of course, large corporations like Merck conduct their own inspections, but according to this boss, exporters also have tricks to get around this. So how can we be sure that the mica imported by this German group has never passed through a child's hands? Upon my return to Paris, I wanted to confront the Merck group with my investigation. I sent an email to the communications department recounting the discoveries I'd made in India. During our investigation in Koderma, we spoke with some of their partners who told us that both Ramdu and Pakisia, like all other exporters, provide themselves with mica collectors in Jharkhand, whose mica comes from illegal mines involving child labor. In their response, the business sent us their corporate responsibility information again, assuring us, based on our available information, your statement that our suppliers would source third-party mica from illegal mines involving child labor is incorrect. Continuing our research, we found a Paris-based association, the Responsible Mica Initiative, an organization that seeks to eradicate child labor in the Indian mica mines. It states that it lobbies the Indian authorities and carries out social action in nearly 80 villages across Jharkhand. Among the 50 or so sponsors, Merck, L'Oréal, Chanel, and Yves Rocher. The manager for France has agreed to meet with us. Bonjour. Bonjour. Enchanté. Enchanté. Rondo. At their offices, we show her images that we filmed in the mines in India. It's intolérable, en fait, de, de voir ça. Et du coup, il faut agir. Il faut agir maintenant. Et c'est bien pour ça qu'on a été créé et qu'on s'est fixé des objectifs extrêmement ambitieux d'éradiquer le travail des enfants à 2022. Fanny Fremont is aware that child labor is still an issue, but assured us that it's out of the question for brands to leave the region. Si ces entreprises décidaient d'arrêter d'acheter du mica en Inde, 
finalement, c'est l'intégralité de ces familles qui n'auraient plus de revenus. Donc c'est pour ça, une fois de plus, que je dis que c'est courageux de rester, de savoir qu'il y a un problème, mais de se dire, eh ben, on reste, on prend conscience et on met toutes nos forces pour le résoudre. Le MICA est une des uniques sources de revenus. Si l'ensemble des entreprises quittaient l'Inde et allaient se sourcer ailleurs, ce serait, un... enfin, ce serait terrible d'un point de vue social et économique. Towards the end of our investigation, we made one last discovery. We're back in the mining region of Tisri. Over recent years of excessive exploitation, mining has had an impact on the health of the population. The village hospital has a room dedicated to people suffering from tuberculosis. Beshupal is waiting for his appointment. He has spent 10 years working in the mica mines. For the past month, he's been suffering with respiratory problems. The doctor in this makeshift hospital sees a hundred or so patients a day. Around 60% of them are suffering from coughs. Any persons who work in these mining areas may engulfing the dust particles. Are they converted into the that problems? If that is the uh, complicated more at times, that converted into the tuberculosis. That is, it is mining. So maybe chance more than 80 to 90 percent. Maybe problem is there due to the dust particles. So complication is maybe me or any other people who work or not work, but that this environment is live here, may be affected by the same problems. <laughs> Do these non-regulated mines risk having an impact on the health of an entire generation? We can't really say, but these hospitals located in mining regions see a higher rate of pulmonary illnesses than anywhere else in India. However, local residents aren't aware of this, and children are particularly at risk. An association from Koderma is campaigning to alert the miners in the villages. We talk with the villagers not to work in mines because it gives a very bad impact to their health and send their children to schools because education is very important. We mainly aware them what are the health hazards working in mica mines. Raoul is 24 years old and comes daily to the mines accompanied by these local campaigners. He goes to families one by one to warn them. Today, the group is going to focus on the family's mother. They're asking her to stop her activity and listen to their recommendations. After a short negotiation, she agrees to take them to her home. On their way there, the group attempts to build a friendly rapport with the miners. Anshia Devi lives here with her four children. Her husband lives in Delhi. She has to take care of them on her own. 
तो बच्चे पर क्या प्रभाव पड़ेगा हम पर के उसका माल उसके बारे में कुछ मालूम है कुछ नहीं मालूम कुछ रहा तो बच्चा के जाल देवन करोगे हम तो लेकिन मेन है कि जैसे जो मैका जो कोड़ता है ना तो इससे जो गर्दा निकलता है जैसे देखिए बच्चा का टीबी भी होने का ज़्यादा डर रहता है बच्चा का टीबी है खांसी उसी हो जाता है कि जो माइंस में काम करते हैं या जो ढेबरा कोड़ते हैं तो ज़्यादा इसमें रोगी लोग लो टी वी मिलता था इसलिए गर्दा जो धीरे धीरे जाता है फेफड़ा पर तो फेफड़ा में जो बैठता है ना तो उस, उस पर उसका ये करता है जाम हो जाता है और जाम हो जाता है तो श्वास लेने में उसको दिक्कत होता है इसलिए इस, इसका ये है The activist then makes his strongest possible argument with the mother. Ne bhai isko band karo legal nahi hai. Ti band ho jayega to phir kya rozgar karegi? Mane dhibra band ho gaya sarkar se agar na ek dhibra nahi kore denge. Hai ve karwe ki dharti mein jalam dal bhagwan to aadhar deve kar. Kaun chik mazduri kar raha hai? Ha dhan ro payven kar raha hai, make ro payven kar raha hai to mazduri kar raha hai. Chura कहाँ जाते कुछ पढ़ाई पढ़ाई की चर्चा हुआ किस पर लगा के क्यों रो रहे हैं चुप 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 रे कनों ने कनों ने कनों ने कुछ नहीं हो रहा है कुछ नहीं बेटा देख आप पढ़ा ना कुछ नहीं नहीं जी हाँ नहीं जी हाँ पढ़े चुप The residents of Jharkhand are trapped in a vicious cycle. They must choose between their health or their survival. According to the NGO, the only possible solution would be an aid plan for the development of the region in order to create jobs. But the local residents are still waiting for this. How long will they have to wait?